Hello my friends, today I'm going to show you how to create an interesting story with your photos for a slideshow. My name is Olivio, I'm a professional designer from Vienna, Austria and let's get started. So I think we all know the situation, we have a nice journey, we take a ton of photos, our friends just don't have the attention span to look at all those pictures individually and today I'm going to show you a nice workaround for that. I'm going to close this real quick. Um, I clicked here on document and transparent background so I have this checker box look and the first thing I want to do is go up here to view and then to guide manager and here it says horizontal guides I will click on add new horizontal guide and this should be at 50% if it's not just right in 50% here and we can close it and you can see now we have a guideline in the middle horizontally through our canvas which is by the way 1080p. The next thing we are going to do is to use our rectangle tool and drag a shape and I'm going to set the fill color to a darker gray and the stroke I'm going to set to white down here. By the way, if you don't see this HSL color wheel, just click here on color, then click here on this pop down menu and select HSL color wheel. Okay, the next thing we need to go is here for the line setting, click on style here, solid line style. You can choose the width to any of your choosing or what you like, bigger or smaller or thinner or wider, better said. You want to set the joint to, um, to meter joint. And if the edges here look a bit strange, play around with this meter number until it's a nice sharp edge. Okay, so after we have done this, we can move this so it snaps to the middle line and then just change the width of it. And these will be our placeholders for the pictures because we're going to build um, one frame with multiple pictures that give a nice impression of the scene. If you want to have it a little bit more dynamic, what you can do is go with your mouse down here under this blue grabber and then uh, not onto it, but a little bit under it. So you see these two arrows and move it a little bit to the side. You can see like this. So you have the sides on an angle and then we're gonna drag this out here a little bit. Okay, so the next thing we're going to do is hold our control key, click and drag, and this will create a copy of our shape. And we can just place this anywhere so it overlaps the other shape and then just do the same thing again. And then we do it again for down here. And I think it's a good idea to be a little bit irregular with the shape so don't make them connect because I think this makes it more interesting and more dynamic. We can move this over here a little bit, uh, move this here for example and so like this is like a comic book and if it's not connecting directly then this is a little bit more uh, dynamic and interesting to look at of course you can move this over here if you feel like you want to have a bigger shape in the middle you can go any way you want a thing that i would do now is uh, to click on the rectangles and number them so you know what rectangle is what it saves you a lot of time um, and nerve when you put in the pictures so here we go, four, and then we have five, and down here we have rectangle number six. There we go. So the next thing we need to do, uh, go is file and then place and select our pictures. In this case, we only need six pictures. So let's select six pictures. We could use here an overview of the market, the fish, the guy, the kid, the old woman, and so maybe the pig heads over here. I think these are six pictures. Yes, they are. Okay, there we go. And as you can see, my pictures, they are not edited. They have a too small resolution for 1080p for a screen. I did this on purpose because I wanted to show you that this works even if your camera by accident is set to the wrong resolution or your picture isn't as sharp as you would love it to be which doesn't matter as much if the picture is smaller. So the next thing we can do is to move this to the um, placeholder that we want to use. So for example, let's move the kit down here, uh, make it a little bit bigger maybe. And then we just drag this onto the shape. So here we go, bam. And this should now be in here, which is not, I don't know why, did I number them the wrong way? I did, okay, so this is six for some reason. There we go, but now it works, there we go. So uh, here we have the old guy, let's move him up here. And you can see with these details, the interesting thing is that you are basically building a story 
uh, with these pictures, but you have multiple pictures in just one slide. So you can show off a lot more of your holiday photos or journey photos or what you did, interesting stuff that you did with your friends. Um, wait. Okay, there we go. I numbered them, but I, something went wrong. So yeah, it wasn't that perfect. There we go. So we have an overview of the market. I would suggest to you to always use at least one overview picture so people know what is going on in your photos or with the selection so they're not confused by what you're doing. Uh, there we go. I'm almost done. Let's do this real quick and then I can talk a little bit more. So there's the pick hats. We put them over here. You can see it's super easy. Um, if you click on this little arrow here, you can select the picture layer and you can still move it around, resize it, everything you want to do. If you want to resize the shape, by the way, you have to drag the picture out. Otherwise, it's going to resize and uh, uh, like change the picture in a way you wouldn't maybe want it to be. So as you can see, this is a very nice and fun and fast way to build a story, to have all these details and impression in your picture. By the way, when you look at the old lady, you can see that we can't see the fish. So maybe move her over a little bit like this and make sure that the picture covers all of your placeholder uh, so we don't see any strange uh, background uh, shapes or colors. And with this, you can see you can be really playful and dynamic and put these in all different kind of combinations uh, with each other. Uh, and also to have it on an angle or not have it on an angle. It's really up to you what you want to do. Another fun thing, by the way, that you can do is instead of using a picture, you can use a map. For example, here I took a screenshot of Bangkok a part of Bangkok and we can put it down here. Uh, wait, we have to put it in the right uh, uh, frame. So this would be the right frame down here. Okay, so now this is also limited. And if you want to have a pointer where this market has been, for example, or the location of this, you can go in here and I would suggest to use the tier tool, which is a shape that's also known from Google Maps. So we have created a shape. I guess it's below our picture. Yeah, this is completely in the wrong space. So let's put this here. I will set the stroke to none and then we can change our fill color. Let's use the classic red, maybe like this. Use our move tool to turn it around. You can hold your shift key to turn it in iteration so it's easier to hit 190. And then you can place it where you know that the market has been or think that the market has been. So now you have a pointer here so your friends know where it is and they can actually see, yes, this is a market and you have some different details about it. And um, this is a very nice way to build a story and have different details at the same time give you more opportunity to take interesting photos of smaller parts of the scenery because afterwards when you combine it in a canvas like this, the people can still connect it uh, to the full story. Okay, let's do a second one of these. Like I said, you can be really playful and free with these combinations. Maybe I want to save this real quick. Save. Um, let's call this zero one. one and let's close this. Okay, so let's do a second one. For the second one, I'm going to use our pick hats as a background. There we go. I'm gonna stretch it out over all of the picture. And even though it's too low a resolution, doesn't matter. So now it's uh, covering all of the background. I will right click to rasterize it. And then I will go up here to filters, blur, Gaussian blur and blur this. So this seems like a good setting. You can play around with how soft or sharp you won't have it. Uh, you, you want it to be. And I'm just using this as a background. So it can be pretty unsharp, maybe in uh, a sharpness where you can still guess what the background has been. And the next thing we're going to do is take the ellipse tool. I'm going to hold my shift key and drag it out. So we have a circle. And again, I'm making the center of it a dark gray. Use the stroke, set it to white. And then with the outline, select something that seems fitting. This is a bit too much. Maybe like this is okay. Okay, so the next thing is let's spread out a bunch of these. Let's put this over here and then 
again, like I said, we hold control and drag to copy it and you hold shift and drag to resize it without losing the shape, the perfect shape of the circle. So I'm going to do this a couple of times. There we go. And you can see this is a fun way uh, to spread out pictures over a background, give you a lot of interesting details for your photo story, basically. Uh, let's use it like this, make it a little bit bigger. There we go. Okay, so we do the same thing now. I'm going to use my map first and I want to place it on this one. There we go. Um, select my picture again, move it up a little bit. There we go. And again, of course, we can use our teardrop tool um, to create this tear shape to show us where the, uh, where the location has been. Turn this around real quick. Bam, there we go. Set it anyway. I don't know where it was. So it's just like for you to see what I'm doing. Let's go place, place another picture. There we have the scene with the fish. Which one is this? It's that one. Okay, so I can place it here. Go in here, click on the picture layer, resize it and then move it into place. So I have an interesting detail. Next picture, you can see this is really quick. You can uh, create a really nice and interesting slideshow. Let's have an overview of the market down here. Uh, which one is the, this one is the right one. Okay, there we go. Maybe select this a little bit different. There we go. That looks good. Okay, next one. Place. Uh, let's use these eel. They look fun. This is the right circle. There we go. Again, select the picture, resize it to the appropriate size. So it's actually filling the circle. And then we need one more. Uh, maybe, again, the woman down here. Or we could also have used the child, but um, I think she is maybe more interesting. There we go. So you can see we have a nice arrangement of details, multiple pictures in just one slide of our slideshow, building a story. By the way, if you want to connect these, uh, all of these in an interesting way, the other thing that you can do now is uh, you could use over here your pen tool and just uh, click and then click again. So you have this line. Of course, you can uh, uh, adjust the stroke length and can now put this here. I want to put this uh, just over the background so it's not overlapping any other details. And then I'm just holding control and drag. So I'm getting multiple of these lines and I will connect them to my map. So they are all pointing there and we can see, oh yes, this is actually all from the same um, location. So you can see very easy, very fast. And now we have a fun uh, slide for our slideshow that's telling a story about this market. And of course you can follow this up by individual pictures and stuff like that. And you can play a, a lot more with these different shapes and create a story, have all the details in there built up to the full impression that you had from the situation and the market and create this very dynamic and playful for your friends. Okay, this was the tutorial for today. I hope it was interesting for you. If you like my tutorials, maybe subscribe to my channel. I to do two tutorials per week and if you want to support me even more head over to patreon where you get a lot of benefits also my files with all the layers you get feedback on your creations and great stuff like that thank you very much and see you in the next tutorial bye